Real Talk starts now. Here's Ryan Jesperson. Well, good afternoon and welcome to a special live broadcast event here on Real Talk. I'm Ryan Jesperson. We're streaming to you live on YouTube, coming to you live on our audio platform, Mixler, at ryanjesperson.com as we welcome to the program Canada's Minister of Finance, the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Christia Freeland, uh, live from Ottawa. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister, thank you so much for making time for us this, uh, this afternoon and welcome to the show. It is great to be with you. And Ryan, I'd like to start by doing a deal with you. Okay. I would like to call you Ryan if you promise to call me Christia. Oh, I'll do my best to pronounce it correctly, uh, Christia. And thank you for making time for us. Let's get right to it with the limited time we have. Uh, the conservative uh, finance critic Pierre Poliev, James Cumming, an MP out of Edmonton, and others have accused you essentially of salivating over Canadian's personal savings account to uh, stimulate the economy. They're calling it dystopian. Uh, they're talking about the federal government's plan to unlock Canadian savings accounts in plain language. What were you talking about the other day in the clip that's being pushed out on social media from opposition MPs this week? Um, so, Ryan, uh, in plain language, uh, what I was talking about on BNN and what we wrote about uh, in some detail in the fall economic statement is really capitalism and common sense. Uh, we know that small businesses are the heart of our communities and really the heart of Canada's economy. But because of physical distancing, a lot of us haven't been able to patronize our beloved local businesses the way we normally do. And a lot of those businesses are facing hard times. What I think we need to do as a country is once the vaccines are here and once we are able to fully reopen the economy is go out and patronize our local businesses. Go out and have breakfast in your favorite coffee shop, have supper in your favorite restaurant. It's gonna be time the tourism business, tourism industry has had some hard times. It's gonna be time for all of us to go out and travel around our beautiful country. I sure hope I will be able to take my family for a trip to the Rockies next year. Uh, and so what the government wants to do is find ways, once we're able to fully and safely reopen the economy, find ways to encourage Canadians to go out and support our local small businesses. What those businesses need, I am supporting them right now uh, from the federal government level to help them get through COVID. But you know, those businesses would prefer not to depend on a federal government check. What those businesses would really like is to have their local customers come in, buy great meals, travel, shop in our local shops. And if we all do that, and if the federal government can find ways to encourage us to do that, that is going to jumpstart the Canadian economy. Okay, because you know, though, I mean, the, the Prime Minister uh, at the end of November, and it looks like we may have had uh, the Deputy Prime Minister's uh, signal drop out there, so we'll uh, obviously make that uh, adjustment on the fly as best we can and get uh, Deputy PM Christia Freeland back on the line. I believe that we have uh, the Deputy PM back with us uh, after a drop signal, and there we go. Uh, Christia Freeland, obviously, I think probably working in close proximity with her team is, is probably why she has her mask on right now. Uh, can you hear me okay? Can I fire another question your way? Okay, we're good to go. And uh, yes, Ryan, I can. And just so you know, um, here is where uh, I I could see you, but I couldn't hear you. And I could ah. see that you could neither see nor hear me. Okay. Um, where I dropped off was uh, you had asked me a question about the preloaded stimulus and the way that we hope that all of us as Canadians uh, will be able to go out 
uh, unleash that pent up demand that I think a lot of us are feeling for going out, for traveling around our country. And in doing so, really jumpstart our economy. So I had talked to you about that. I hope I had explained to you that far from being a dystopian plot, um, I think that this is capitalist common sense. Okay, so we we actually dropped out. You got your full answer in, but we dropped out when I was asking you about the prime minister's comment back mid-November about the opportunity for a reset and the idea of the World Economic Forum's uh, position with the Great Reset. And you know that that some are suggesting this is a, a sinister government plot to advance a green agenda. Uh, how do you perceive the relevance of that so-called Great Reset? And, and what does the Prime Minister mean by talking about an opportunity to reset? Okay, well, look, um, the Prime Minister, uh, I will not uh, speak for the Prime Minister uh, or try to put words in his mouth. I work really, really closely with him, and he and I, uh, I think, are really fully uh, in tune with each other when it comes to the Canadian economy and a lot of other things, too. Um, I think we need to think about our economy right now in three phases. Um, stage one is where we are right now. And that is we need to keep on fighting COVID and we need to keep as much of our economy, as many of our households intact as we fight COVID. Uh, and that is why the federal government has put in place a really extensive safety net for Canadian businesses, for Canadians. And we're doing that because it's the right thing to do to support people who are in difficult economic circumstances through no fault of their own. It's, you know, for a lot of businesses, it's impossible to operate in these lockdown conditions for a lot of people have lost their jobs. But we're also doing it, Ryan, because it is economically the right thing to do. If we can keep as many businesses as possible, as many families as possible, solvent and intact to the end of the pandemic, if we can provide people with a bridge, then once we're able to fully reopen the economy, we will be in a position where the Canadian economy can come roaring back more effectively. So stage one is get through it. Stage two, hope and vaccines and get to a place where we can really reopen. And then once a place where we can fully reopen our economy, I think we all know we're going to have some work to do. We have recovered significantly from the depths of the COVID recession. 80% of jobs now recovered, but 640,000 Canadians still who had a job before COVID started still don't have a job. And so what I announced last Monday is a growth plan that the federal government is preparing to invest between three and 4% of GDP between 70 and $100 billion to get our economy back on track and to get our economy growing. And of course, Ryan, part of that has to be some forward-looking investments. We need to do things like invest in rural broadband across the country. We've all seen how important the digital economy is. I think we've just seen Ottawa broadband is not always adequate either just now. So, you know, we need to move forward into, you know, the not the economy of yesterday, but the economy of today and tomorrow. So things like rural broadband, digital economy more generally. And yes, Ryan, we do need to invest in the green and clean economy. That is where the world is going. I think the Alberta oil and gas sector has heard from global investors that that is where the energy sector needs to go to. And I am so proud of my Alberta roots. Uh, I realize I'm an MP for downtown Toronto, but I still consider myself in my heart an Alberta girl. And I am very excited about working with Alberta businesses with the Alberta oil and gas sector to together be part of that transition to a clean green economy. Lots of oil and gas companies have made net zero by 2050 commitments. And I think those are going to help 
us all get there. I One day when we have more time, when we have an hour to connect, I'd love to ask you about your Alberta roots and how that informs your policy. I know that we're up against the clock. You have a commitment that you can't break, but but let me mash this I think we, we should spend a couple extra minutes, Ryan, in view of the breaking up of well, the if, connection. If you can so do I that, owe that then let me circle back because I'd like to ask you that question. You're you're born in Peace River. I know you're proud of your Alberta roots. You, you attended Old Scona High School here where I'm speaking to you from, Alberta's capital city of Edmonton. How does the economic plight of the prairie provinces, the double whammy, so the COVID recession and global, the energy collapse and everything associated with that, how does that resonate with you, your Alberta roots in your current role as, as Deputy PM and as Canada's finance minister? Uh, it resonates with me very profoundly, Brian. Uh, I love Alberta. Uh, I know how entrepreneurial, how smart, how vibrant, Albertans are. And I know that for the Canadian economy to prosper, we need a prosperous Alberta. And I am 100% committed to working with the amazing people in Alberta to be sure that that's what we build together. We're hearing uh, really incredible. I mean, the minute that we announced you were going to be with us on the show, we started to receive emails, like very thoughtful, long emails with policy proposals attached from groups, legitimate groups. Carmen's watching right now. A prominent lawyer from a big firm here in Western Canada says we have an idea specific to the charitable sector where we think we could unlock capital. What's what's the government willing to consider in ways of accessing philanthropic donations? We've got Ravi who's chiming in. Ravi's in a tough position, having just opened a, a beautiful brand new hotel well the opening's been interrupted and as you can imagine ravi can't look back to 2019 or early 2020 numbers because the hotel didn't even open until march of 2020 so he doesn't qualify for the emergency rent subsidy the emergency wage subsidy he says our savings are running low how will the deputy pm ensure the playing field is level for us how open-minded do you have to be? Who are you talking to when it comes to ensuring that policy is reflecting the plight of everyday Canadians, entrepreneurs like Ravi and like Carmen? Um, I try, Ryan, uh, to talk to as many people as I can every day. Um, there are lots of smart public servants working here in the finance building in Ottawa where I'm sitting right now but I am very, very aware that there is no monopoly of wi on wisdom here. And the best way to figure out how to build a growth plan for Canada is to talk to lots and lots and lots of Canadians. Earlier today, uh, just today, I talked to the great people at Northern Chicken. I don't know if you have ever eaten there yourself, Ryan, or recently had their delicious takeout. Um, and I also had a very moving conversation. These obviously were over Zoom. Um, with some amazing, amazing uh, Edmonton and Red Deer healthcare workers. Uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't say to them via your very, very popular podcast, uh, I honor you so much. I respect you guys so much. Uh, you are my inspiration. Uh, and I bet, Ryan, everyone who watches and listens to your podcast will agree with me when I say to Alberta's healthcare workers, thank you so, so, so much. You do the hardest jobs in the world, and you are saving lives every day. And I, uh, I couldn't be more grateful. To you. you know, we're, we've been speaking with healthcare workers almost every morning uh, here on our live broadcast. We, we go live every morning at 830 Mountain and, and hearing how they're bracing themselves, not just managing the challenges right now, but bracing themselves has been very moving. There's another uh, frontline reality here through this pandemic, and it was very evident and it has been evident to Canadians in all of the major cities, though not exclusively limited to them. And, and that is the ongoing challenge ar around eradicating homelessness in Canada. Now, this was a commitment to end chronic homelessness in the throne speech. How quickly can the federal government act on the rapid housing initiative? It's obviously a challenging scenario for many of Canada's, if not all of Canada's cities. Do you have a spy in my office, Ryan, or something? Because you asked me, uh, do I talk to Canadians across the country? And that's what I was doing this morning. 
And the other thing that I just finished doing before talking to you is having a great conversation with Don Iveson and Nahid Minshi. Uh, and uh, one of the things we talked about, probably the thing we focused the most on uh, was ending homelessness. Uh, Dawn is doing really amazing groundbreaking things in Edmonton. And we talked about ways that the federal government can be a partner to help those efforts. Um, I do really hope, um, you know, Ryan, um, you asked at the beginning about, you know, how we're gonna build back after coronavirus. Um, I hope that one of the lessons we will have learned from coronavirus is that when we don't take proper care of the most vulnerable people in our communities, uh, not only is that a moral failing, but we also endanger everyone. Uh, I think that's one of the things we've learned. And so I am delighted by the work uh, that uh, Edmonton and Calgary are doing on ending homelessness. And I'm really committed together with my colleague, Ahmed Hussein, to continuing uh, to work with those cities on that. We'll make this our last question, and we thank you for your time. We thank you for this extension. In closing, Jay Jumbuck on Twitter, certainly not the only one to bring this up this week, says, uh, and Jay Jumbuck's watching right now, says Canadian taxpayers are owed transparency. Hi, uh, says regarding infrastructure, COVID-19 response expenditures, liberals need to be accountable to Canadians for how and how much they spent. Recipients need to be responsible for what they received. Accounting is needed now, not post-mortem. Do you acknowledge a deficit? in transparency as the critics have suggested and if so what can you do to turn that around um what i acknowledge ryan is a need for transparency uh i am a big believer in the intelligence of canadians and i think uh, that every government uh needs to be as open as possible and that is a hundred percent our intention uh, when it comes to the coronavirus support programs, uh, I hope and I actually believe people will agree with me that the first imperative has been to get the support there and to have it in place. And that's where we focused our efforts. Um, but I absolutely agree uh, on the value and the importance of transparency. And that's something uh, that we believe in providing. I wanna say, Ryan, just one more thing on those programs that is maybe particularly relevant to Edmontonians and Albertans today uh, with the introduction of uh, additional lockdown measures. And I would just like to be sure that all of your listeners know that we do have a federal lockdown support program in place. So for businesses, um, you have businesses can apply for a wage subsidy program that's currently up to 65% of your wages going up to 75%. That's what our government announced we'd like to do. There is a rent support program in place and that provides up to 65% of your rent. But if you are a business subject to lockdown restrictions, you can get another 25%. So you can get up to 90% of your rent covered. And I just wanted to be sure to make that point, Ryan, to your listeners, because I am sure that there are some businesses in Edmonton that when they look at the new lockdown restrictions are pulling their hair out and saying, oh my goodness, how am I gonna get through the next couple of difficult months? Please apply for these programs. They are precisely designed to help you get through the next few difficult months because I would like to be in Edmonton for the Folk Fest and I want all my favorite restaurants to still be open. Well, I, I think uh, it goes without saying you're not going to be paying for Northern Chicken for the next 30 years. So if for no other reason, you might want to get to Edmonton for that. Uh, Christia Freeland is Canada's Deputy Prime Minister, the Finance Minister as well. We certainly appreciate your availability here on a special afternoon live edition of Real Talk. Thank you for this.
Great to be with you, Ryan, and sorry for the technical difficulties. It's all good. We roll. We keep it real. That's what we're all about. Thank you so much. That's Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland. I want to let you know that interviews like this would not be possible without the support of our incredible sponsors, including the sponsor that powers our Real Talk RJ hashtag. We're going to be keeping an eye on that hashtag through the afternoon. Let us know what resonated with you in our conversation with Canada's Deputy PM. And of course, we'll be talking about this tomorrow tomorrow morning on the show the team powering our hashtag is the team at park power your friendly local utilities provider they're in the internet game electricity natural gas as well they're proud to be alberta owned based in alberta employing albertans in their customer service and call centers plus the profit share with local charities at park power you can check out more at parkpower.ca same goes with the team at alta storage very proud to be western owned your local source for all of your storage and moving needs they have these pod style containers that everybody's raving about all you need to do is give them a call they'll drop it off at your property you can fill it yourself or hire people to fill it for you they'll help you make that move and when you're all said and done they're going to ensure it was a seamless transition plus they have those eco-friendly frog boxes too. Check out the team at Alta Storage by visiting the sponsors link at ryanjesperson.com. Tomorrow morning, we will go live at 8.30 Mountain Time. We'll talk about this. We hope to speak with Conservative Finance Shadow Minister Pierre Polyev. The invite has been extended and we'll wrap up everything else making news this afternoon. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you tomorrow at ryanjesperson.com. Gonna